City Commission study session. Please turn off or silence in all cell phones during the meeting. Meetings are televised every day on Channel 2 at 6 p.m. at midnight and available for viewing on YouTube. Uh, welcome to our study session, everybody in person in TV land. So here we go. Uh, first up is the Lemoore School District USD 453 quarterly update. And welcome, Dr. Mike Roth. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for the opportunity once again to address the commission. Um, first of all, I hope you're staying cool. I know Sarah, her husband, left the office for a while, so he's probably home making sure everything's fanned. I wanted to say this on live TV just for you, Sarah. <laughs> um, not a lot. Uh, we're getting ready to close out our, uh, our budget year um, and begin our new one, which our budget year ends in June. June 30th and our new budget year becomes, uh, we open it July 1. Um, so we are in the process of doing that. Um, our early childhood center is completing its first year. It's actually the last day of school is this Friday. Um, so we're excited. Uh, um, and I know the kids and teachers are excited to uh, get on with their summer. And um, that was the intent to shorten that break of when kindergarten um, when the kindergartners in school and then when they begin uh, first grade and our hope is is that we start seeing some growth um, In where we're at in first and second grade without any type of additional summer loss and so um, We uh, are excited to kind of follow this group through to see um, what uh, that really comes to be we have a couple projects that were going on um, in past summers. We were finishing up bonds and doing those types of things, so there was a lot of things happening. We have the parking lot at Henry Leavenworth, which I know many of you are probably aware of because you've been in communication and conversation with some patrons in that area. Um, so our hope is, is that that parking lot's complete in the next few weeks. It'll definitely be done before school starts. Um, we have a plan um, in place working with the building administration and our grounds crew uh, to hopefully eliminate any of the stacking out on uh, Viola Street. So um, uh, good news hopefully to come on that. And then our other project um, is our tennis courts at the high school. Um, we've totally reconstructed them. Um, and all the cement work's done. It's just curing, and once that's complete, uh, they think around the third week of July they'll come in and, and resurface uh, the tennis courts. We have enrollment. We're uh, gearing up for enrollment. It's amazingly enough that we're all already at the end of June, and we're talking in in kindergarten, but beginning school again here before too long. And so um, we don't have an exact date on that. We're still uh, working with uh, some companies to get that uh, online and, and going, and so we'll uh, be publishing that before too long. And other than that, we have our Pride magazine. In our Pride magazine, it also has our, it's got a spare copy of our school calendars. Um, and then within the Pride magazine is a copy of our school calendars, both the Early Childhood Center and um, the 1 through 12 buildings. And so with that, I would be open to any questions that the commission may have of me this evening. You're taking some well-deserved time off? Actually, you know, our busy time in our office is really from about the end of February, first part of February, middle of February to the end of February through um, the end of October. Um, and so we're a little more frantic now. We have about 99 openings um, in our district, including uh, all of our classified staff. So uh, we're interviewing and doing those types of things. And... Um, I try to take off Friday afternoons and head to the lake, and that's where I put my cell phone away and don't think about too much until about Sunday afternoon. So, but I thank you for asking. Anybody else? Looks good. It's good to have everything back more to normal again. It is. Um, you know, the one thing, it's January seems so far away. Um, January is when uh, coming back at semesters when uh, the mask mandate we lifted for from a district um, and finished out the the rest of the school year um, it seems like an eternity ago that we were all talking mask and doing those types of things 
it's, it's amazing how resilient our students are and uh, truly how resilient our staff is. Our teachers did a remarkable job this school year and the last two years uh, working through some of the more difficult times that uh, we faced in our generation. And so um, anyway, it's just it's, it's awesome to work with good people. Uh, any updates on the free lunch programs? Um, right now, everything is uh, so the summer f the summer feed is ongoing right now, and that and that's almost like we've done in the past. Um, we had to adjust a few sites uh, just due to uh, some staffing issues, uh, but we're still serving um, at the high school, uh, middle school, and I believe it's David Brewer is our other site, um, and then um, it, or it might be Anthony, um, and then. Um, this coming school year, uh, as of right now, um, where in the past uh, couple school years it's been totally free for students, yeah. it'll go back to the application process. And so we're going to start sending out information to families um, kind of in stages um, to where they understand that that process has to uh, begin again based on the federal government guidelines. Okay, thanks. For those 99 positions that you have open, I mean, are you hopeful that you'll be able to build? You know, we usually get a decent wave of military families um, as they come in um, uh, into the middle of end July into the first part of August. So we do have some late hires that um, it traditionally uh, we've had access to. Um, our biggest, we have uh, 43 of the 99 are certified. Some of those are with ESSER dollars. So they're not necessarily something that we have to have to begin school. It's something that we want to help support our kids to close any, uh, any uh, academic loss or anything that we can help uh, um, close that gap a little quicker with some additional staff. Um, but we're, we're short in our kitchen and our custodial staff is where we see a lot of the in our pairs and especially in our special ed. So um, we, we've done, we've, uh, Recently, on the recommendation of a school board member, put out uh, Facebook on Facebook. We took out ads there. We took out ads on uh, the different uh, sites. Uh, I hear it advertised all the time, and I just lost my. Uh, it's a, the business side. They, LinkedIn or Indeed? Indeed. In, Indeed. Indeed, yes. Okay. <laughs> That's what it was. And so we're trying some things outside the box and then word of mouth and those types of things to try to help with that. Okay. Great. Any other questions? Did you have anything? No. Okay. No. Great. Right. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Uh -huh. Enjoy, Enjoy your summer. Evening. Yeah. Um, you should have. Okay, next up, project update, 4th Street, K-7, between Choctaw and Seneca. Madam Mayor, Commissioner, I'm going to turn this over to our Public Works Director in just a second, and we do have members of the design team here. Um, there was really no specific project milestone that we hit, but with this being such a high-profile project, um, we had made enough progress that we wanted to get this back in front of the Commission and the public, so we wanted to share some updates and then give a little bit of a timeline just to keep this in front of you because it is such an important project and the teams have been working uh, really hard. So I'm going to turn that over to Brian Faust. Oh, thank you, Madam Mayor and Commissioners. Uh, the update this evening is on 4th Street between Choctaw and Seneca. Mm -hmm. uh, this project was uh, partially done through KDOT. We received a grant probably a year and a half ago. Uh, $1 million worth of construction. Uh, it was actually set up for the first two blocks um, from <coughs> Choctaw through Delaware. Um, but we added the other two blocks to go all the way up to Seneca to make an improvement in the entire downtown. Um, BHC and RDG was here in January, uh, held uh, meetings at the community center. Uh, they're back here this evening. Uh, presenting tonight is, is David with BHC and Carrie with RDG to provide a kind of an update of where we are on the schedule and also to talk a little bit about streetscape. So with that. Turn over to Carrie. You can set your exhibit right up when you talk about it. Nice. All right. You need to just play it. Oh. I just turned you off. Okay. Are we good? Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. All right. Sounds good. All right, just to get you oriented here, I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. Uh, I can zoom in here. Oh. Well, we'll just uh, we'll go with this. Um, so we'll go back here. So get to get you oriented here. Um, to the left is Choctaw Street, 4th Street is in the middle, so north is to your right here. So um, we have Cherokee and then Delaware here. And then on the next sheet is kind of Delaware, Shawnee, and Seneca, which is the north, um, north limits of the project. Um, some things that when we were here in January, we sketched out some concepts. And what you see here is... Uh, very conceptual. We're kind of at the beginning stages of the kind of streetscape uh, design here, uh, mainly kind of the back of curb items is what I'll be talking about today. Um, and these are just concepts and options that we're going to work through with the city um, as we go through the design on the project. And Dave will give an update on the schedule here after I get done talking. But um, these are some ideas that we came up with. So as you're uh, moving um, north um, on 4th Street, so when you're coming from the south, Choctaw is kind of the gateway, your gateway into the downtown area. And right now we have some pretty wide open, vacant, concrete parking lots. So that's kind of your first impression of, from uh, as you're coming in to downtown. So... This uh, section view here on your lower right is basically right right here. So this would be kind of proposed um, streetscape, kind of looking north. Just imagine kind of buildings on the east side and then a parking lot on the west side. So helping to uh, create kind of a nice landscape edge to that parking lot, helping green up that um, west side of the street here. Um, what we've got proposed, um, some of this might uh, might need to work with the property owner. Some of that could be an easement, um, taking up a little space to allow for some landscaping there. Um, if the property owner isn't, you know, agreeable, we do have enough room here in this area that we could have at least a four foot wide landscape edge within the right of way, kind of within the public realm there, and then. It, um, as far as the section goes, the sidewalks will have an 11 foot, 11 and a half foot sidewalk on the east side of the street, and then a um, 10 foot sidewalk on the west. But with, you know, in, in these areas where we might have landscaping, um, with that four foot of landscaping, that would kind of be about six foot of uh, sidewalk just through that area. Um, but again, if... if as working with the uh, landowner, if they have, if they would like to add some landscaping on there, then maybe we can widen that sidewalk out. And then we'll also we're also looking at um, some potential planters on the east side, just to again provide a little bit of green. So there's an example there. That's a planter uh, in Tulsa. The uh, the concept is kind of bluff to the river, so these. Planters slope from uh, west to east, similar to how Levin, the city of Leavenworth slopes from uh, west to east towards the Missouri River. And then uh, some decorative, potentially some decorative paving along the edge here just to separate that sidewalk um, from the street. And then another option that we're looking at uh, potentially is just providing a color um, concrete uh, median, and there's an example of that on your uh, second page here of a uh, project that we've done in Council Bluffs, Iowa. Um, so moving uh, a little bit north here, uh, an idea of maybe a, a space where those sweet gum trees are. Um, they're looking a little uh, look looking a little worse for the wear. So, and with the construction of the new sidewalks. Uh, potentially planting new trees in this area and providing an outdoor space uh, where maybe food trucks could uh, park near this area. And so those are just a couple of examples there of what it could uh, potentially look like um, in that area. And then uh, moving north, we would have a median as we approach Delaware, mainly because Delaware is one way going east, so we don't want anybody turning 
uh, left onto Delaware. So that would give an opportunity for a median with some landscaping and maybe some uh, light columns uh, as a way to help celebrate kind of that uh, downtown core area. We might look at maybe uh, concepts that tie into the history of Leavenworth um, and things like that. And again, it gives you a little bit of a nighttime experience too, as well, besides the uh, daytime experience. It helps kind of signify that major intersection of Delaware and 4th Street there. And so then uh, moving uh, north, um, we're also pretty much the same section uh, moving north. Um, we're also looking at, uh, here's an example of that maintenance edge, just a color concrete edge to the uh, sidewalk there. I, I mentioned the gateways on the south side. These are a couple of examples. We could have one on the north and one on the south. Seeing as Seneca is kind of your, seems like your north edge of downtown on, on 4th Street. So we could play off of, you know, some of the architecture and maybe that Art Deco, uh, the theater downtown, uh, playing off of that, similar to what we did in Council Bluffs. This was a, a gateway column that we um, featured with, we used uh, historic postcards uh, that, again, helped tell the history and the story of, um, of Council Bluffs. And um, these columns here, too, were at Raleigh, uh, South Carolina, and the streetscape we did there, too, North Carolina, sorry. Um, and again, they played off the history of the of the area. So those are just a couple ideas. Um, and then as far as lighting goes, uh, the light poles there now are, are in pretty good shape, uh, but we're looking at potentially adding some pedestrian lighting just as a, a more pedestrian scale light to complement um, the lights that are already there on 4th Street, the overhead lights. And then just uh, some examples of uh, potential plant palette of, you know, using native and adaptive plants that do well uh, in this area. And then um, having uh, color concrete crosswalks, again, to help signify the pedestrian crossings and really emphasize, you know, making this more of a safer pedestrian environment as people are walking along 4th Street. So with that, I'll open it up to questions. Yeah, I got a question. Yeah. Uh, can you go back? Sure. Okay. So down here in this corner, so you have uh, one lane, you know, going south and one going north yeah. on 4th Street. So that middle section there, is that a... Uh, That'll be a turn lane. That's a turn lane. Yep. Okay. That's what, that's what yeah. I was wondering. Because yep. it looked we raised, gonna... raised, so nope. I didn't know. It's, it's, just different it's out the same, yep, yeah, just a different color. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah, I know. That's all right. Yeah. I was yeah. saying, is it just one way? It's, yeah. No. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Good question. Okay. Good. 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 And then my concern, and I know this is, you know, this is first time you guys here and yeah. you still are working on it, is the intersection, well, when it comes from... From Metropolitan down 4th Street to Seneca going south, I mean, that's like four lanes. So, mm -hmm. I mean, do you feel like that that with traffic? Yeah, so what we'll do it, yeah. How it would merge? On the north side of Seneca <clears throat> and the south side of Choctaw, then we will use uh, just pavement markings or striping to uh, transition those lanes and get them set so that, you know, when you're either going into, going from the four-lane section to the three-lane section, that the cars be aligned where they need to be to go in and then when you go out of uh, that area going northbound you know at Seneca that you can go from from three lanes back into the four lanes safely so we we'll use pavement markings to take care of that maybe over about 250 to maybe 500 feet if needed uh, north of Seneca and south of Choctaw so that's how those would, would transition <laughs> Do you, did you, well, I'm sure you did, but I'm just going to ask anyway. Did you look at, um, you know, the counter traffic and everything during the days on that? Mm -hmm. Like going and coming, you know, because people from the fort. Are yeah. Okay. No, we did, we did traffic studies, I believe, in uh, October okay. of this last year. Yeah. They were doing a traffic study as, as well. I'll comment on some of that stuff after we talk about some of the, okay. the streetscaping. Okay. But no, yeah, the streetscaping, yeah. Some really good ideas. <laughs> yeah, um, and thank you for this you. Uh, presentation. Yeah. I appreciate it. Uh, definitely, obviously, it's more of a costly measure, but 
getting a lot of lighting down there would be, you know, ideal. Uh, you mentioned the whole safety to the public and everything. Just increasing that and the welcoming environment. <clears throat> Plus, I think lighting is cool. But yeah. uh, uh, is that, you know, I would like to see uh, going forward, I mean, whatever we can do to <clears throat> maximize it. I know there's a lot of different varieties of models of hardware, you know, and, and units and stuff like that. But um, that's something I would love to make sure is incorporated as much as we could. Um, and then just real quick, some of the, the a few of the goals that you kind of had with the whole design um, methodology and what you wanted to try to accomplish with, you know, a set design, what are some of those that you wanted to hit on? Um, as far as streetscaping or just the overall kind of overall road Overall road concept, road. yeah, overall yeah, project. What, you know, outside of anything with um, the actual street itself, but just... <clears throat> part of the design, is there anything you wanted to kind of get out of that that you could speak to? Yeah, I can touch on that in a, in a second. Um, um, but I'll, I just wanted to kind of point out some of the things here with the, the streetscaping as well. Um, so, yeah, that center lane there is going to be a two-way left turn lane. So if you need to turn into an alley or a side street that's available, KDOT kind of dictated to us and said, hey, you got to have an 11-foot, you can have 11-foot through lanes and a 13-foot two-way left turn lane. It has to be a two-foot differential. But they wanted 12, 14, and 12 uh, then that would be a pretty w a wider section. Mm -hmm. So we were trying to conserve as much of, we were trying to make it as, as narrow, but as safe as possible to provide some more room on the, on the, uh, uh, for the walkway areas. Um, and then I'll also note too that, uh, as, as Carrie noted, like they're at the south end there by Choctaw, you know, you come into that area and there's, there's uh, um, parking lots to the west. There's a great opportunity there to, to just get an additional five feet of easement. And all that would do is, you know, from my perspective, that that if you if you've been to those seen those parking lots, that center aisle there is really really wide. You're not going to reduce any parking from that person. It just makes that center aisle um, five feet more narrow, and it's still plenty wide in my perspective for that. But you know, again, that'd have to be a discussion that city officials would have to have with the owner there. But that would help you know, for a whole block there from Cherokee to for actually a block and a half, um, and then also. Um, some of you guys saw the outdoor space examples there. Mm -hmm. So those sweet gum trees there, I mean, I was out there like, hey, these things look fine. But if you've, if you've seen them, they're all, the roots are kind of all round around, <laughs> yeah. and, the, and the tree kind of overhangs <laughs> the roadway. Yeah. So when we rip out the sidewalk and put the sidewalk back into roadway construction, it's very likely going to be cutting into those roots. So that's, when you do that, it's just a matter of a slow death for those trees. So right. the option here is, as you can kind of see some of the, some of those examples, mm -hmm. is, you know, we're, there's four trees out there now, we put back eight and you'd have some options here for food truck or just kind of a gathering area. It's kind of a cool concept. But again, you'd have to work with the property on that. On, on that. And, uh, you know, you could reconfigure their parking lot, maybe repave that for them or restripe it, somehow working with them to create that space for the for the downtown area. Uh, and then the only other area, too, that was uh, needed some easement was there the southwest corner of 4th and Seneca. So those are some areas that uh, I just wanted to point out that have some, some easements um, how, how wide are the sidewalks? So on the west side, we're going to maintain the same just the same width of, of ten feet. So if you were able to obtain some additional uh, easement there in that block and a half, you can maintain that same width and still have your your landscaping. If you weren't able to come to agreement with that adjacent property owner, you would basically you'd be encroaching, so you only have a six foot width on that side. And then the east side. We're going to make it a little bit wider, and it's going to be 11 and a half feet versus the 10 feet it is now. But um, okay. um, Brian wanted me to touch a little bit on the traffic study that we're doing. So we looked at four different scenarios for this area. We looked at the existing and analyzed it, say, hey, how's it functioning? Or how, are the, how, how far back are the, queue, are the cars stacking up? And then we also looked at three future scenarios. So we looked at the four-lane facility and using pre-timed as it is now, and then also looking at, okay, actuated, which means that, okay, I know there's a car on the side street. Let's... Let's get them through. So that's another scenario. And then the, the final one we looked at was, again, this, 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 the scenario you have up here, which is three lanes, and then also using actuated um, signals at Cherokee and Delaware and, and Shawnee. So that means that when a car is there, it, it can tell that, hey, there's a car here. Oh, let's, yeah. let's flip the switch and get them going. Otherwise, if there's no car here, just keep it green. So we looked at all those, and <clears throat> what you see here, the three-lane solution uh, turned out to be the best for a number of reasons. Um, one, you get a little bit wider through lanes for trucks versus you get 11 foot lanes versus the 10 foot lanes for through lanes. Uh, it also narrows the crossing for pedestrians at the intersections from from 40 feet 
down to 35 feet. It may not seem like it makes a difference, but uh, five feet for some folks is <laughs> you're getting out of that area just a little bit quicker. Um, it also provides a, uh, more of a buffer from the edge of the, the roadway to the buildings. Because I know some folks are like, hey, this, is, this, this truck's coming down here and it seems really close to my building and shaking it real good. Well, there'll be a little bit more of a buffer now. Um, good. For those, I mean, for those people, we <laughs> it's not. We're not making it any less. So it's 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 actually getting a little bit more. And then again, like I mentioned, additional foot and a half on the east side for sidewalk. And then um, again, you have a continuous left turn lane. Which if you've been on, if you've been driving down the street or any four lane street for that matter, you know you get behind somebody in the inside uh, lane. Sometimes if they're turning left, you have some you have a chance to have rear end collisions and things. This gets those left turners into that center lane. Um, so all you got to do is worry about somebody turning right, and you can take the right corner a lot quicker than you don't necessarily have to stop. Um, and then also, the uh, this scenario doesn't increase the intersection delays significantly. Um, you know, if you have four, you might have it, it. It really it functions about the same as it is now with this uh, with this scenario. And uh, again, you're not blocking um, up cars in the uh, the intersections. So. Um, the one thing I need to point out, so we're, we're, we're finalizing the traffic study. The one thing that we need to use some engineering judgment for KDOT, uh, we ran the uh, analysis in here and counted, and counted vehicles. Uh, the traffic signals at traffic signal at Delaware is not warranted. And if we were to run a 24 hour count at Cherokee and Shawnee, it's likely those uh, based on traffic volumes uh, are not warranted either. So we just need to use some engineering judgment to say, hey, you know, these have been here and it's come up with additional regions, uh, reasons for judgment to show that these, these, these are valid even though they're not necessarily warranted. So um, that's, a, that's something that we're gonna do in this next revision for the traffic study. Um, just some additional items I'll point out too is that the, uh, we're working with the adjacent uh, buildings there to identify the presence of coal chutes and tunnels. Uh, we do know there's a tunnel uh, just north of uh, Delaware going across the roadway there and kind of paste it off. If, and uh, to see where that is. So we'll, we're working with them to have them take the board away and kind of see where it goes because there's also a, a storm sewer that goes underneath the roadway to see how that tunnel interacts with that storm sewer. Uh, that's another thing we have. We've done uh, uh, <clears throat> some video inspection of the storm line as well as the sanitary line in there. And uh, it's, it's basically all brick uh, along there. So the worry is that if we begin tying in a new storm sewers or taking other ones out, that that whole brick wall is just gonna go Pow. So we're, we're looking at the possibility of replacing uh, the storm sewer that's, that's underneath the roadway. Um, that's just something that we're working on now in, in design. Okay. And then uh, also gonna be adding a project website to keep the stakeholders and interested parties informed about, about what's going on. <coughs> but the last thing I'll touch on here real quick is just the schedule. Um, like Brian said, we had some, uh, the, work meet, the workshop meetings in January. Also held a utility coordination meeting here in, in April. Um, <clears throat> we do have a geotech report. Like I mentioned, we also did storm and sanitary camera inspection. Uh, late May, we turn in uh, field check plans. It's about 50% plans to KDOT and to the city. So we're waiting to get back uh, comments from, from KDOT on that. Um, and then uh, just uh, last week, we walked with the city through the, through the project. Um, and well, in the future, we'll be holding a public meeting at some point uh, just to kind of get feedback when the time is right and we have enough information that's, uh, that's good for the folks. Um, and then additional uh, plan set submittals to KDOT in September, November, and the final one in, uh, in February. So this project would advertise in February. Uh, it would be opened or basically uh, determine who the low, bid, who the low uh, contract bid was. And then that's going to happen in, in March, and then construction would begin in mid-April. That's the anticipation. Um, and then once construction goes, the storm sewer replacement, if, if we decide to go down that route, would happen about that time. Um, and then other project construction, like demo, uh, demolition and grading and curb and gutter would happen. And then uh, in probably uh, late fall or winter, during the winter months, um, this is going to be concrete, so the unique thing about concrete pavement is you can do that in the winter months. If this was asphalt, we'd have to wait till spring or fine days or warmer to do that. Um, so this would probably like, likely be open to traffic, depending on weather and utility relocations, be open to traffic probably late 2023 to early 2024. And then the spring of 2024, it could do plantings and striping and, and restoration. How... Um 
are the construction that you're actually doing, how is that going to affect the local buildings that are on either side of that? I mean, there's, uh, we, we have to determine that just yet, but I mean, there's, there's been, I mean, that road's pretty bumpy right now. There's a lot of truck traffic coming through there. Um, I mean, they do have to compact the road and things, but there are, there are ways, or there are certain <coughs> construction methods that you can use that are, that are a little less impactful than, than maybe typical construction. Yeah, we feel it in the building, and yeah. I'm sure Young Sign and others do too, feel it in the building. And that's why we're trying to do some investigation, investigation too, like with tunnels and things, because we don't want to have yeah. know, somebody just fall through and right. <laughs> have some issues. Or even, you know, on those sidewalks, there's a, there's a buried stairwell or coal chutes. You know, they could be um, trying to lay, lay sidewalk and be like, okay, there's a hole here. We're trying to identify those right. now as right. best we can. If it's the first city in Kansas, so there's going to be a lot of a lot of those kinds of things around. <laughs> Question. Um, oh, go ahead. Okay, then. Go ahead. I'm, you know, we've we've talked about the sidewalk, the widths, and all that, and uh, even some of the outdoor spaces for folks, for uh, the the people to uh, use Fourth Street. Have you done in your traffic studies? Have you included pedestrian traffic? We did take a we did the pedestrian counts um, again. It was in October. We anticipate that with these improvements that the pedestrian counts would increase, um, maybe not substantially, but, but, but a fair amount. Um, and again, that would also help with validating uh, the traffic signals as well with an increase of pedestrian and, and potentially bicyclists as well coming down to visit the area. Will there be a bicycle lane? Mm, it's not planned. You brought it up. <laughs> I haven't even thought of that. There could be people coming on the side streets using that. I mean, the, 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 or the, the sidewalk, it'll be, you know, we got 10 foot on the, on the west side and 11 and a half feet on the right, so uh, you know, there's some room there. Yeah. Or scooters, man. Right. <laughs> 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 Just keep them on the side streets. You can do anything else? As, as far as trees, I mean, I love trees like everybody else, yeah. but I've also seen the damage over the years that they've caused. Um, it, it, our uh, possibility of portable planters with trees an option? Well, I'll let these gentlemen speak to it. I know that we've gotten smarter with trees in the downtown. We've pulled out a lot of sweet gum trees. We've come back with um, some pear trees. Uh, what were those? Locusts. 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 Yeah, that I think don't have the same root systems and don't have the same, you know, the, the other part about those sweet gums is, is the trip hazards that's created by the fruit, the, the spike yes. ball. So mm -hmm. I'll let these gentlemen speak, but I think we're better at that now. Yeah, I think it's all about the type, one, the type of tree. You know, there's certain trees that th thrive in an urban environment. I would say sweet gum is probably not one of them. Um, and two, there's a lot uh, better technologies out there too for kind of underground drainage and support for trees mm -hmm. that you could still kind of pave over but um, have those uh, type of things underneath underground to help with drainage and um, support for tree life and just allows trees to thrive a lot better in an urban environment. <clears throat> Any way uh, to uh, incorporate <clears throat> some outdoor audio speakers to pipe music in to make it a little bit more inviting environment? Sure, yeah. Especially I mean, Christmas I know it adds time. more, you yeah. know, but uh, yep. <clears throat> yeah, Christmas time, events, uh, yeah. various things. Uh, sure. Yeah, it might make more sense maybe on Delaware where you have more of the commercial mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. real estate corridor sure. and less of the truck sound. Okay. That right, you can't right. Do the, right. But so. when you got the two major parades that we have, St. Patrick's Day, and uh, Veterans, Veterans Day, Day, you know, There's music piped things. in like that for those occasions. Yeah. And then we have our little Christmas one, too. Sure. The small yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Christmas. yeah. 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 Similar to what Commissioner yeah. Martin said, we, we've long heard that the Christmas decorations on Delaware look great, but... The reason that they're not on other streets is because there's no power to the poles. Uh, we have beautiful poles that West Star or Evergy put in for us, nice concrete poles, but they have no power. This will give us the opportunity to have uh, power on those poles all along 4th Street so we could put lighted stuff on there. And also potentially on the west side, I know Zona Rosa, whatever, you've seen the trees that are wrapped in lights? Mm -hmm. yeah. We can add those uh, power receptacles also on the west side so that yeah, whole, that whole corridor nice. could be lit up. Um, and I know Commissioner Martin and I have talked about that quite a bit, so... Yeah, I think Definitely going back to your like comment on what's the goal, I think it's just to create a more welcoming and ple pleasing environment for pedestrians and even people driving through. Oh, well, that's cool. I appreciate yeah. that. I wasn't yeah. sure exactly, you know. Yeah. So, no, that's cool because it helps safer. to yeah, safer. Yeah, because yeah. 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 right. it's treacherous right yeah. now. <laughs> right across Street. It, it is. It is. <clears throat> I'm excited to see how much 
the truck traffic will subside, the, the, the noise rather, mm -hmm. uh, because one of the things that I didn't mention that we were going to adjust is, I don't know if you notice right now, but the cross slope on the roadway is set up so that it's continuous with the side streets, so that when you go down, when you go down 4th Street and you go over, you, you're driving down 4th Street and you go past the side street, you got a 2% slope up and 2% or, yeah. or a slope up and a slope down. Sometimes it's steeper than it, than it needs to be. So that's going to add to the, the balancing of the that. trucks. Yeah. So now yeah. what it's going to do, instead of, instead of going up and down, you're going to have a consistent slope on 4th Street Smooth. all the way through. So you're going to be on the same slope, essentially, as you go through this, through this corridor of 4th Street. So that should help with the balancing of the trucks as well, as, as well as a smoother road. Yeah. And, and more room for the trucks to get 11 feet versus 10 feet. So. Just a couple quick internal notes. We've been continuing to plan for the funding side of this. Uh, we've had the stormwater discussion about replacing the line through 4th Street. It makes a lot of sense to do it while the road's ripped up. Um, yeah. We've also planned for the amenities. Uh, we should thank ARPA dollars as we have continued to have those discussions. Yes. Um, primary funding for this is federal funds exchange dollars. That's uh, federal streets dollars that comes and the federal government to the state to the city and so this we've been banking those we get an annual allocation so we're in pretty good shape on the funding uh, without having to do anything uh, sacrifice any other projects so I think we're in pretty good shape on that good sounds good nice yeah, presentation thank you no, I'm good right now okay no <clears throat> yeah thank you thanks, thanks for your time thank you. Robert. Thanks. thanks very much thanks. Okay, next step, sign recognition policy. This will be uh, Penny Holler, the assistant city manager. So we just talked about, Mayor and Commissioner, we just talked about uh, 4th Street in the downtown. I'm going to shift our focus a little bit to 4th Street in the southern part of town to talk about uh, recognition sign consolidation. But let me ask a question. If someone were to um, ask us, what is Leavenworth known for? Likely, we would say... Prisons. For the first Military city. <laughs> community, historic downtown, uh, there's a, 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 a university here. Those are some of the things that might uh, come to mind as we answer that question, talk about Leavenworth. Um, some of us might answer that question, it's the hometown of Melissa Etheridge. Yep. It's the hometown of Amy Hastings, yeah. 2012 Olympian, home of Murray Dixon, the major league pitcher. Mm -hmm. And we might know that, potentially, um, because of the recognition signs. So we've all seen this on 4th Street. If you are driving north, they start at Muncie, and you're headed toward the VA. These are on the right side of the road or the east side of the road. Um, there have been several of them added over the years. As it currently stands, there are eight, uh, along with the Medal of Honor winner sign and um, one team recognition sign. So there's about 10 signs right now that have been added. Um, and it really, the signs serve two purposes. It's a chance for the community to celebrate the hard work and achievement of those that are recognized. And it's also our chance to share with visitors and others what there is to know about Leavenworth. This is the way we help shape the narrative. What is Leavenworth known for? With that, though, leads to a question as we go forward. As the community continues to achieve and members of the of Leavenworth do great things, how should they be recognized? So here's an example. I uh, crossed off their, their town name. Um, this is their attempt to uh, address that question. And you can see there are several signs. It's a little bit of a random collection, different colors, different shapes. It's partially covered by the tree. Um, and it, the question really um, that this prompts for me is, is this the best way to recognize members of the community that have done something notable? Um, so that, that's really the question that I think is uh, before the commission tonight is, if that's not the best way to um, recognize notable achievements of Leavenworth locals, then, then what is? So three considerations that we can look at is, 
one, is it ideal to have some sort of consistent branding, consistent style as we look at these signs? Is there a way to consolidate these signs by category? So we could maybe combine existing signs and make space for new additions. And then what's the optimal placement of those signs if that's the way we choose to continue mm -hmm. this? I think probably right in Paul's yard. Hmm? Right in your yard, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All in front of the city manager's right office. Right. Right. <laughs> so something to consider is making it not necessarily about signs, making it part of a recognition program. So something that we can come up with that's maybe a potentially Leavenworth branded item. I threw out Leavenworth celebrates. And this is sort of um, the theme of how we're going to do the recognition um, for those who've already been recognized and for those who will be added to the list. So I pulled um, three existing uh, folks from the community that have been recognized, Dr. John Levitt, Melissa Etheridge, and Randy Sparks, um, and just sort of came up with what if there was a, a sign that looked something like this, and this is just a little bit of a concept at this point, um, something branded, City of Leavenworth, and that really, um, in a, a consistent and professional way, sought to, to do that recognition. And then the question would be, is it helpful to um, categorize these signs so similar ones are put together? So rather than having 10 signs and we add two more and we add two more, maybe consolidate these by some sort of category. So these were categories um, that are based on what's there right now, sports excellence, cultural arts achievements, notable public and military service. Um, this is also in some ways referred to in the sign recognition policy, um, allows for a success in various fields, civic, academic, artistic, entertainment, athletic, military. It's really not an inclusive list, but in some ways, we could try to come up with some broad categories um, that might work for the purpose of consolidation. So perhaps each uh, person recognized doesn't need their own sign. And then if this is part of a recognition program and not just a sign, um, if we were here in 2015 and the girls basketball from Leavenworth won the state championships, uh, maybe there's some sort of event that would be tied to that. So potentially them coming to the commission meeting or there's a, a presentation when this is put up on site, when they get their sign. I have an example of the village of Deerfield. So this is one I, I pulled off their website. So what they do is they present the sign during one of their governing body meetings and then that's put up for someone to take pictures yeah. with. Or to mm -hmm. have and that's nice, yeah. And then that also allows two members of the community to be there right. during the presentation and to see that afterwards mm -hmm. as well. That's important. So then really, if, if the thought is to continue on with the signs but do something a little different, um, the final question is, where should the signs go? So we know where they are right now. They're right next to the road. Um, is that the best placement of signs? So one option that staff would like to present for your consideration is uh, moving the signs uh, into Ray Miller Park. Um, and this could potentially be a location where uh, they could better be appreciated. Um, there's already a parking lot that's there and a gazebo, disc golf. This could be something that adds on to people being able to stop, see the signs. We could potentially add on a QR code in the corner, which would allow access to the website. So folks who wanted to learn more could That's learn true. more about, um, tell me more about Melissa Etheridge. Yeah. Uh, tell me more about Murray Dixon. Um, so just for the consideration, um, and there could also be one sign on 4th Street that directs people into the park. So um, it's not... You have to know that it's at the park. We could find some way to say, hey, come to the park. Here's where we um, have that recognition for those in Leavenworth that um, have done these really great things. And then really that's um, the, the feedback we're, we're you know, looking for from the commission is 
sort of where do we go from here? So we have the 2017 policy, which was in your agenda packet. It provides some guidelines, um, but the thought is maybe we add on to that, um, or maybe we look at the, the different structure of the signs. So it's really kind of a feedback session for the commission to provide some thoughts. What are your <coughs> thoughts? What are your preferences? What do you think would be helpful to the community um, and really kind of, you know, preserve this for others to, to know what Leavenworth is about? I think our policy is pretty good. I just, the, the signs themselves are what always bothered me, just having signs on poles. I think they should be on some sort of a background where display, a, a big display, and where they can be added or taken off or whatever, you know, so, so they're not, and definitely not shaped like guitars and stuff. I hate that. <laughs> well, I definitely they, love they, the, uh, they should be. Oh, go ahead. No, I was just on here. Uh, what I was concerned about is to be recognized worthy individuals. So, I mean, I don't know if that has to be put in the policy, but if it's um, not an individual, if it's a group, mm -hmm. you know, or an organization, you know, so there's no question. So it looks like we've done this already right. um, with the uh, <clears throat> girls' state basketball championships. Mm -hmm. So. It, but, it's not necessarily in the policy. Oh. The policy is written for individuals, but that's something that could be updated to mm -hmm. say, I agree. Uh, I, yeah. you know, school groups or however we want to come up with the language. And that's where, you know, again, staff could use your direction to, right. to develop that and do that update. But it sounds like um, how we want to define group or club or something like that really would fit this program. Right. Yeah, okay, and uh, yeah. I love the presentation in the city. Who's ever being honored, whether it's the, the club, the organization, or the individual, uh, to be able to present that, uh, whatever we choose to go mm -hmm. with, whether it's a sign at the city sure. commission meeting, allow them to you know bring their friends and family, mm -hmm. but honor them during that time. Uh, Instead of just putting it up there and then yeah. you, you notice it one day, you know. So, hey, <laughs> Got to check out that sign. Yeah. No, that's a cool idea. So, yeah. yeah. I like that. Uh, you, um. What do we know what we're going to do as far as who we're potentially who we would have design any of these going forward? What that would look like? There was that example you had up there after the Young ceremony. Sons. Young son. <laughs> um, <laughs> perfect. Perfect. The shout out. No, yeah, it's it's yeah, slide uh, eleven right there. Oh, slide Ooh. eleven. Miss Holler. Yeah. And uh, it's real quick. This one. Yeah, on the right side there. I mean, if I'm driving by, I can't. I'm not I'm even not reading bother that. reading that. You know, there's like so something that, that is, is you know, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Look at a deer field. Oh wow, look at all these ordinances. <laughs> you know, so just as long as it's <laughs> yeah. clear, not too busy, and and you know, easy well, to read. something like the the uh, the slide. Uh, go to the slide, uh, not above it, but uh, the slide with the ribbons on it. Yeah, you know, something where. Everybody gets the same treatment, you know, and we have absolute, you know, definite criteria for you get one of those mm -hmm. because otherwise we'll have, you know, the families of every Tom, Dick, and Harry, you know, wanting to do it and, and groups too. Right. You know, so we have to have definite criteria. The other thing is if we come up with a place we're going to put it, is that the place that's where they're going to go, because right now there's some violations of the policy. You know, nothing says do something down there by the new hotels uh, north. I shouldn't say down. I should say up on Fourth Street, and then there's a bunch of them that are north of the uh, VA entrance. When the policy says they'll all be south, and there's only two that are south of the VA. So I guess on the, the design part, we, we would need the direction first. If you like the consolidated idea versus the, the blue ones that have like the multiple ones, like the we are not designers. <laughs> we don't claim to be designers. There are designers who do this. We would get the direction and then we would, we would, sort, yeah. we would seek a professional you know, to, to do that. But we just wanted to sort of hone in on, do we want individual signs consolidated in an area or do we want all the signs consolidated on... 
more of a backdrop. More background. Right. I mean, you have to yeah decide, am I just going to drive by and see them, or are they actually going to be placed in a park where I can stop by and walk through? I like the park. It, I, 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 I did yeah. too with the, yeah, yeah, that little square thing. Yeah, whatever you call it. I like that <laughs> idea. Because <laughs> we already have that. The CBB has yeah. their big thing since you do that. Yeah. There is one at Wrangler Park. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's nice right. to learn more. But uh, on a background, can, when you said that at first, it kind of put me in the thought of go further south now. The yeah. south end of uh, Lansing, as you're coming north, mm -hmm. there's that big sign, and it's got all the different civic organizations. Yeah, Corona's Lions, yeah. yeah. That's yep. kind of what I had in mind only on uh, you know, yeah. different, different type of design for, for this, but still, something like that where you have all the signs right Yeah, there. something, you know. Is this coming from the general Welcome to Leavenworth, home of. The general fund, is that where this <coughs> is coming from? Oh, the cost, I mean, we really haven't spent a ton of money or time on that. You could look at transient guest tax, you could look at economic development funds, um, but, but not, not general fund. I think yeah. would, be the, yeah. would be the thing, because we yeah. do have that If we fund. put it in, you know, <laughs> level, uh, Leavenworth Notable said, you know, whatever, with a sign and did a whole thing, we use transit guest tax dollars. So what's the thought on having uh, the designers put together a few, <laughs> like some mood boards or something like that, just some different concepts and, sure. you know, how soon could we have something like have that? You have to put that out the table to look at. Yeah. Because designs cost money. I mean, that, that's what, where staff can put the work in if that's the direction that the commission would like to go and, and do that outreach. It depends. It depends. It depends. Or, sometimes or sometimes designs on, own, you know, it, it the city staff can do it. I, mean, I think that'd be a lot better. Uh, it wouldn't cost us as much. My guess is uh, for city Sorry. staff, I want we're potentially looking for something <laughs> <laughs> right. like our more traditional exactly. signage. How many designers do we have on staff? I don't know. That's that's what I'm asking. Do we, do? do we have people on staff that could do it? Well, so do we like the idea of the consolidated signs. Um, that's enough guidance for us to bring you okay. back. More, I think so. Okay. Yeah. More, more information in Ray Miller Park and and some. Well, then you have to think too. Well, an idea I'm thinking. I mean, if let's say you did put them in a park or something, uh, would they all be exactly the same look or? Yeah, I think the continuity would be good. Be good. Yeah. Yes. So then they would stand out and say, okay. We wouldn't take the ones that we've got now and put them on something. No, no. See that. no I, I didn't know if they'd be, fun. yeah, all the same. So we're going to have this one big sign that says Hometown Heroes turn this way. Something, like, something that. like that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then we direct it to the heroes, bar. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. And that's yeah. it, and you can learn so much more about them. Yeah. You, know, you, you, you know, with signs, I think, you know, you try to put as much as you can on there, but there's still another story. That especially people that don't live around here want to know, you know, yeah, and we want to tell them. And I love the, uh, you know, just the, the, so yeah, the little code part, thing. So the special right. Yeah. Part. yeah. Let me open a can of worms. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> How many of the signs that are up there now were because I noticed the policy said if we do it, that we know it'll be our cost. Are there any out there that we didn't do it? Somebody had it designed and uh, and constructed at yes. their own expense. Yeah, well, so they paid for it. They, yeah. Yeah. yeah, they paid for it. Yeah. Yeah. What are we going to do with those existing signs that have been paid for by somebody else? Wait, we don't throw them away. I mean, we have we to. We're going to throw them away. No, no, no. But I'm thinking we have to return them to somebody. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, so when you when you put, when you put a sign up, you have to fill out an application, and the application has to have a sponsor. So we could start there with the sponsor of the sign, with mm -hmm. contact information, and we can get there. Yeah, yeah, and either give them back, or or if they want to have them hung somewhere else, like like Melissa Etheridge sign in the community center. When you walk in the front door, her sign is right there in the community center. So you could have them, you know somewhere in the community center or something well and then more i mean even for the if lumworth high school i guess that would be i don't know a school board or whoever would want it on their property I mean, yeah yeah the wayne simeon do, sign they, yeah right and then is, did amy hastings go to lovenworth high yes. school mm -hmm. you know both of those signs they might <laughs> like to have them so the only question that i have now paul i know there's uh two individuals that are currently waiting yeah uh, so what's the timeline 
We have two individuals and a group. We have yeah. quite a bit that we, we've held. So, um, I mean, we got good direction tonight. I'll okay. meet with Penny tomorrow okay. after staff yeah. meeting. And okay. We'll, we'll, it won't, it's, not, it's not a lengthy thing. Um, I got you. It's not something like Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you, Penny. I've been, no. wanting, I've been wanting this for eight years. <laughs> Great. You said eight years? Eight. I've been here eight years. Oh, my God. So it was I worth, uh, the it was worth uh, getting out to take pictures this morning in 100 degree weather. So. Yeah. <laughs> But no, a great discussion. Yeah, thank you, Penny. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. So next up is Camp thank Leavenworth you. update. Ellie is here. All right. Wow. There she is. Hi. How are you guys? Great. Good, good. How are you doing? You. I guess you good. survived your full of art. I, I'm a little sunburned and yeah. peeling, but um, <laughs> it's a little hot outside yeah. for yeah, a week. I'm kidding. But um, mm. we had a great event. It's good to turn out. Good. Um, well, great. So we're here to present um, just an update for you guys, so feel free to ask questions. Um, generally, you saw we announced Camp Leavenworth, um, and the the new kind of highlight that we did was the run, yeah. um, which you saw some of the new graphics, which we think are really, really cute, and um, we're excited to have kind of something new and fresh to, to show the event. I know. Um, we're seeing rabbit. great, great already interest. We've got sign-ups. That's good, um, without a lot of promotion behind it. Um, and um, the big focus that we heard from you all was to really, what can we continue to do to keep this local and keep involvement of local folks? And so we kind of put it on with the run coordinator. And I believe she's already worked with the Lansing cheerleaders and the love, the same, who was it? What else? She's trying to get the Leavenworth cheerleaders as well. And the Leavenworth cheerleaders. Um, and just overall, just trying to get connections. She wants to be at Pear Day um, at, at camp or at Fort to kind of talk through how to involve and kind of be out there and get people involved in that, which I think that would be an excellent idea. So great to have her on the lay, like boots on the ground, kind of promoting the run and kind of getting that out there. Um, the other piece that we're looking at is you saw we launched um, the Maker's Village. This year we Last year we worked with Strawberry Swing, which is kind of known in, in Kansas City and the region for kind of coordinating with local makers. And we really felt like now we have a good kind of understanding and, and trying to do that ourselves and kind of really reach out. So we provided two kind of options. One is a, um, it's $25 to sign up. Um, and the real reason for that is we want people to show up. We've also seen sometimes when it's free, they don't always just show up. So um, we have a 25 for anybody in the Leavenworth um, region or city of Leavenworth if they have a business and they meet our criteria, which we want handcrafted goods. This, mm -hmm. is, this is the purpose of that. We will curate it, so we want to make sure that it's the quality everybody wants and, um, and that there's limit. You know, we're just going to give a whole bunch of spaces away. But as much as we can get local, that's a big piece of ours. And then there's the other piece, which I believe is $250 to um, come in, and that's anybody outside that um, Leavenworth area. So really pushing that out. I'll be, I'll be honest, we have like one or two signups, but that's normal. Um, if you know, you asked me about Boulevardia this last weekend. A lot of those makers are there. We had over 50, and they all did fantastic, which is always helpful. They kind of follow us, and they trust us, and... So I know we'll, our focus now in the next couple of weeks is really reach out. Right now it's just out there. Now we're going to really pursue and invite those that definitely have been in the past, but also reaching out to those that we want to try. Where we could use help is if you know of makers in Leavenworth to really ask them to do that. <clears throat> so, and I don't want to interrupt you. Always. Wanna go ahead and, this is okay. the whole purpose. So um, there's a lot of folks in town that would love to promote their business, and not yes. everybody is always going to go into their shop. So, but maybe they're not a maker. Maybe they're not you know, making anything that's handcrafted. Mm -hmm. Why are we limiting it to handcrafted vendors right now? So as an experience of going to a festival, we want everybody to succeed. That includes the people that go, and mm -hmm. that includes the people that like are there selling. Traditionally at festivals, to go up and just listen to a business about windows or doors or locks isn't always as popular, so both don't do well. But to answer your question, we haven't launched it yet, and we're kind of formulating what we think would be a way to do that. 
and we kind of are thinking kind of in a camp camp mode is to create a build uh, like a, a, a bulletin board of such and kind of curate a bulletin board so that people can can kind of segment it whether it's nonprofits whether it's businesses and their local that we could say like here are you looking for this kind of and maybe kind of but we have to again this is where I look for help if, if you've seen something or we're kind of looking at different ways to do that because we want them to be successful and we have seen it in all the events that we do people that just hand out papers and sit at a booth telling about who they are doesn't usually do well when you're drinking and eating and watching and playing with your kids like that's just not the space that's success successful so that was one of the thoughts is how can we highlight some local businesses and have them um come in and 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 you know fill out the form the way we want it so it's all kind of consistent because do we know what our current i know the business directory is something we got to work at right now what do we have any rough idea current um number of businesses that are making handcrafted goods around town? Or um, well, pretty much through the Artists Association um, and there's some other groups that... I think there, I think there may be a little bit of a discrepancy yeah, on what, what the definition of handcrafted yeah. is. Yes, there's, there's two. Sorry, there's two. You could have. Um, I don't know if Candle Queen is still here, but an example yep. is Candle Queen. She doesn't hand make her stuff, but she has a shop and she sells boutique type. Um, so stuff. Okay. so okay. those okay. she's in. She's always usually there. That's an example of somebody that works in the craft and the makers. Um, but there's quite a few that are like, I make jewelry on the side, yeah. right? Um, okay. What we aren't looking for is I'm a Cincy Candle rep. Right. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Sure. So there are differences. We want people we that are practice. curating or what. But if you're mm -hmm. one of the few that sells Irish sweaters on, on a side business, then that to me is a maker. Yeah, I, I, my thought is, that again, I'd like to get everybody's thought on this too, but if you've got brick and mortar here in town and you want a presence there at Camp Leavenworth, you know, maybe what you have to offer isn't necessarily going to be that enticing, but maybe there's something, maybe there's coupons, maybe there's promos you can give out to get people to come in. And I think just from last experience, pe some people were irritated and upset that it didn't feel like they had a chance to participate. So I think there's a lot of, a lot of the businesses here in town that have a brick and mortar that are going to care um, to, to come um, I, th I think there's more than what we realize. Yeah, so I just want to make sure that we're not excluding anybody. So I think that that would be an important thing that we would want some feedback on because what you have to think about then is you've got tire shops and you've got um, people that sell hubcaps and they, mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to use that. But is there a space for that somebody that sells insurance and suddenly we also have nonprofits? That was a big one. Everybody wanting to have a booth. I will tell you from curating events that can really deter your guest as well because they feel like it's not quality of what they're looking for at that kind of event. There's chamber events that do that thing as well, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that is where you go to see that. So I want to, I, I, as somebody that curates festivals sure, and makes right. sure That's the experience, yeah. I've done That's this with do. many festivals, yep. is usually if you have a f shop that is, this is typically how we do it. If you're in insurance and you're in healthcare or anything, those to us, those are corporate sponsorships. That's where you set the tone to come in if you want to be the insurance rep or some of those um, that you're sponsoring because you're a corporate business. But you're not a maker in selling mm -hmm. what we call cash and carry goods. Sure. Can, can I ask maybe a different question then? Um, mm -hmm. And I appreciate the input. Yeah. Uh, how are the companies around town right now businesses being contacted that, that you're aware of right now or, or what's what's the plan mm -hmm. for that I know we kind of talked about maybe coming up with one but yeah um. I can answer that um, so we've at this point been working through the Chamber of Commerce and through Main Street um, the launch actually was included in the May 27th newsletter for the Chamber of Commerce um, so this is just part of, we're starting the efforts to sure. get the word out about Camp Leavenworth. I don't want to steal Kelly's thunder, but we're looking to put together a postcard, which will have the run on one side and Camp Leavenworth information on the other. Potentially that could be at downtown businesses. And as we get those out, that's also another avenue to let them know this can, is happening and they can participate. So Ms. Holler, can we, and I appreciate that, thank you. Uh, can we figure out a way to stay connected to Main Street and the Chamber, so that we know exactly what the status is. I want I want to know that we're putting a good 
put forward to get everybody connected and was it an email that went out and oh yeah I got one reply out of 250 that sent out I just I want to really dial in on that um, okay. and, and, and so that's not the, yeah sorry. what are those outreach mechanisms as we roll out festival information what are those channels that are being created to, to mm -hmm. really reach yeah. especially like that audience like. the mm -hmm. business audience mm -hmm. yeah because so, again if we make our yeah are you looking at having besides this makers fair would you want to reach out to uh, to restaurants and such who may have the ability, and most of them don't, I understand, but uh, you know, may have a food truck or something like that? Could they participate? So, or is it just going to be you know makers? So, food vendors, food vendors, we have put out there as well, and those are for sale. We haven't really changed that as a local versus not. We are prioritizing local. Um, on the food. But as you said, most festivals are hard to serve. A lot of your, even our best food trucks ran out last year because of yeah, chicken and like the problems with <laughs> supply chain. But um, that it's a, it's a, it's a strong thing. Sure. They were all super happy. So a lot of the vendors we have come back, but we are, we hold spots priorities. In fact, we already talked to one who caught COVID prior to the event that was local and they were mm -hmm. like we definitely want to come back in we're holding those as priorities um, now as far as reaching out to them I can only I don't know a lot of those right, so right. I would ask absolutely it's on the website if you're talking to them they should go they should look at the application and they should apply right away um, we have deadlines on there so um, you know a lot of them don't want to because it's they don't have this the the structure a lot of people don't even have the help these right. days. Right? Could you? See, yeah. And could you right. have? I mean, this you know, of course, there's the food truck and you know people that are in the restaurant business. That's totally different than what they do. Mm -hmm. I get that. I mean, if there was some local, like um, I don't know, dessert places. Or yeah, something like we that, would love it. Like, so like we the cupcakes or the cookies, an or, icy or, vendor, or cupcakes, icy, yeah. or you know, again, they have to meet it, it all health us. requirements yeah. and that type of things. But um, those we would love. We would love to have and feature. And those we could even feature in a different way. We could put a tent that's like kind of the the single item um, okay. kind of ideas. So if you know of people, I think we're really open to it. I think it's just a matter of you know. How do we get there? Well, right. From the other side, uh, working with Main Street and that to try to, you know, if you if there's a way we can promote mm -hmm. specials that different places are having, because I know the food. I mean, I mean, ten people said they they couldn't they couldn't you know have two different places, or right. maybe if somebody else said they well, couldn't have right. have a food truck and have their restaurant open because they were so busy. But if there was ways that they could have advertisement or specials or whatever that we could put out mm. and say, while you're at idea. Camp Leavenworth, yeah, that's a good idea. come and see us because mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. have this special. Oh, and maybe great. like during the day, hey, go to the food truck, but hey, now we want a nice on, dinner at night. Mm -hmm. Uh, where do you have here so in town? That's a good point. So we've we're one of the things we've collected, and it's taken a little bit. Is we've collected enough emails from last year, and so now we want to start an e-blast. So perhaps one way is just an e-blast before or after that says we support our local businesses, and here they are. Um, so there's some marketing, and you know it's hard to market to a lot of different people, right? But sometimes the emails are the best way because we have a new look. We could also do things on our Facebook and our social yeah. media. I think you do specials um, and put them on the Facebook. That, that's mm -hmm. a way to mm -hmm. incorporate mm -hmm. them without, it, like, paper yeah. on site, which just, you know, here's a coupon or here's this. And right. as a consumer, if you've ever been anywhere and you've been handed a lot of things, you yeah. kind of become very annoyed very quickly. Like it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it becomes a very trashy place as well because a lot of people and throw them And stressful. Yeah. You're yeah. supposed to be so having a fun time. We have like, to I don't know what to do with all these papers. Yeah, you have to keep in mind the curation of the event. And the event is a festival for people to enjoy music, food, you know, shopping and Just celebrating that and more. Mm -hmm. Well, you know how we uh, normally introduce the band, each city commissioner? Yes. Maybe we can have a list and we can name off the <laughs> That's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Kind of oh, break it down. That is, yeah. Yeah. you know what That's I mean? Good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah there's easy ways to yeah. incorporate them. And, 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 and one idea might be if, if, it's a, if it's a day we pick that we literally all, like you all or us, go knock on doors and say, here's some options. Well, how yeah, would you like ours. to participate? Because sometimes yeah. they don't go to the meetings. They don't read the whatever. Sometimes it's like, hey, we want you to participate. Here's some flyers. How would you like? Here's three ways you can be involved. Would you like to be in an e-blast? Would you like yeah. to there you go. introduce a band? Or would you like to um, 
be in it because you fit these criteria. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. if that's yeah. a good way, maybe we could take a day or something. Oh, well, we keep those that. creative juices flowing, guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I like that. See, this is what you can you provide me feedback. <laughs> you guys get a gold star. Yeah. <laughs> well, we just want to make sure, and, and I'm gonna hit on one thing Kelly talked about is we've already actually also had elected officials or people running for offices asking about booths and. And we really want to stay to local businesses yeah. or local yeah. providers yeah. and stuff like that. Um, uh, I'm not lumping churches, but churches, nonprofits, organizations, right. you get dozens and dozens, and then that's what your festival is. It's Pear Day, basically. It's right. um, yeah. flyers and you know that yeah. kind of stuff. And, and so I would have to back that up very strongly. We have usually very strong policies about leafleting and um, public. Like, so usually we have an area at a festival that is the um, freedom of speech area, which is when people try to come in and, and do that. I want to vote. I want to sign people up to register for X, Y, Z. And legally, you cannot, you have to have an area for them. So it's not always right in the middle of the festival, but there is an area that you have. And so I, I think we've just learned, otherwise it, it mucks it up and it, 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 it defeats the mission of the event. Right. Right. So if there are nonprofit organizations that want to help serve, uh, and that's the way to involve okay. them. Um, so volunteer. I mean, okay. we have opportunities. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think that that's really it. There's the just so many nonprofits. Yeah. And no, I get it. Yeah. Again, I think you have to go back to the core mission of the event and keep it pretty simple. Um, you know, if if you're in a commercial type business. And you, there's sponsorship opportunities for you. Right. The mayor still introduces the headliner. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think you keep it at that. Yeah. yeah. Activities. <laughs> right. So, um, so just kind of moving on. Um, so we're so our big push um, is makers and food, um, entertainment. We are today. We are about ninety percent complete. There's about two holes left. Um, I can't say it because we're on TV, but we okay. will because we like to keep the anticipation of marketing going. Yeah. Um, but I will say we've kind of leaned more for a country feel. Um, okay. We have a Kansas local um, that would be the headliner. Um, and we also have found a Leavenworth kind of rising star band that also um, has a drummer that lives in Leavenworth. So we're really focused on trying to get some of that. We also are looking for a children's entertainer to start the middle, the first of the day, so that we can, we know that's when a lot of the families are there, so Saturday. So we're mixing it up a little bit. Um, we're really, I think it's a good, good fun lineup, and um, our goal is to complete that by this week, and then build our website and launch um, mid, um, we get off to 4th of July. Just no sense in putting marketing out there until right after. after and so yeah. we'll probably look at mid-July, if not right before mid-July, to announce our entertainment lineup. And then um, we are also working on sponsorships, and I would look to you all for that. Um, we've, we've kind of reached out to some that have kind of been there in the past um, and are having meetings on those. Um, but this is a good way. We have different levels, so you really how it is is you – you tee it up and say there's some great opportunities for Leavenworth. I'd love to introduce you to Kelly. You can come to me and we'll we'll connect um, myself and you can get out of it. Sometimes it's best that you do because you don't want to be in the middle of it or if you can simply just be a part of the conversation. So we're looking at those. For activities, we're really going to focus on a lot of the ones we did. We thought we really um, enhanced it. There was a lot more with it. We're going to keep a lot of the things that we had for the kids' activities. We know we enhanced those with the roaming entertainment, the balloon artist, and the face painting, and some of that. We're going to keep with that. Um, and really, we feel like the, all of those are great. Silent Disco, we know. Is, oh, yes. Yeah. He's already got a book. <laughs> <laughs> and that is huge. Yeah. So we'll do that. Um, and the ca- Camp Crafty, we're looking at some different. We felt like sometimes we've overthought the crafts, and so we're going to try to keep those simplified. So we just, because we know kids just kind of get in there for yeah. a minute. Um, so we're kind of looking at the options for that. And then um, s'mores. the s'mores will continue. Yeah. Um, we're going to have the fireworks. We're still trying. You're limited by light. So we're thinking if we can do those before the final act on Friday, 
um, if we can even sooner, but unfortunately due to darkness, I think that's about the time it has to go. Um, so our plan from a timing, just so you guys kind of know in your head, and everything's always subject to change, <laughs> but our plan is mid-July to push out artists. Um, we're going to do activities in the 1st of August to kind of get people excited. Um, we won't, you won't see it, like you'll see the basic marketing of flyers and posters and stuff and all that. That'll be in mid-July. But really our big advertising that you see push will be after Labor Day. It's like, okay. you know, that's when three weeks out from an event is when people are really thinking about what's next. Um, and then um, end of August, you'll see some of that as well. Um, some of our little things are where, I know merch was really well done. Who was it? Was it you that wanted the sweatshirt? No, it was Steve. No, it was uh, Chief Kitchens. Chief Kitchens wanted, wanted the, a sweatshirt. Wanted hoodie. And we did the sweatshirt, and I think we had like five left. So um, oh, we are. Black one. Yeah, yeah. 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 I got one of them. Yeah. So now we're going to look at merch designs. Every thing with um, supply chains we're finding is in, uh, harder. So we're going to have those by the 1st of August um, and kind of our designs and all of that. Um, and that's kind of the final. Did I miss anything? Going back great. to the music. I highly <laughs> recommend Penny Black. Oh, yeah. yeah. Is Penny Black local, local. Yes. regional? And, and they're very popular. Uh -huh. Okay. They I will play a variety of music. Yeah. Little, okay. We have about a couple of slots, so yeah. I'll take a peek at that. That's the name of a band. Penny Black, yeah. Oh, when you said Penny Black, I thought it was the name of a person. Mm. A person? <laughs> <laughs> That's the other Penny. Just yeah, the other Penny. Soothing can, can, uh, I'm sorry, Kelly, can yeah. you tell me again? I think you told me this before, but <clears throat> what funds do we have available for kind of promoting in the KC area or surrounding areas? Yeah, we have a pretty substantial marketing line item uh, in the budget. I, can't, I don't have it in front of me. I don't either, but um, it's fluctuated between like 15... And 20. And, and you're hitting a what? Mediums like? So, given, it depends because once I have the lineup and I kind of look at that, there's quite some bands that, um, there's one music station that really people follow for local music, and we have some of them. So, we would look, that's the bridge. Um, we look at with Visit KC, we're going to, we do a, a piece with them and they put it out on their stuff, which is like an e blast and it's, it does really well. Um, and then sometimes we do billboards in Kansas City and along kind of the region. Sure, here. okay. And then yard signs we kind of put up in key places, but most of those here, here. Mm -hmm. um, and really it's social media, so we'll do some purchases to regions, um, like targeted sure. social that's media. Good. But that's about it. Like really, I'll be honest, you know, not a lot in the TV space or the print space right now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> For this kind of an event, we find yeah, it social. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Mm -mm. No. Good. Kelly, yeah, no, I'm excited. You, Kelly, yeah, you do great, great yeah. every year. Oh, good. Well, do. we're excited. We love this event. Yeah. It's so yes. fun. Yeah, it is fun. So fun. So uh, thank you for the presentation. All right. And Ms. Holly. Sign up for the run. If you yes. haven't signed up I already. Am. That's I've right. Been, I've, been been well. awesome. I've been working on it. And it's, by the way, it's a run walk. Walk. Yeah. Run or walk. Well, I do a jog. I do the middle. You can do either. <laughs> Thank you, guys. You can night. crawl. Thank you. I'll pull you in a wagon. You can do circles around me. <laughs> yeah, wagon pull. <laughs> okay, um, so that's it for our study session. Oh, wow. Uh, go around. Um, Mr. Kramer, did you have anything? I, I don't have anything tonight. Okay. Commissioner Hingley, did you have anything? Go around, and if I do, I'll remember You'll it. Remember <laughs> it, okay. Man, just want to give a special shout out to uh, Joanna Schultz, the president of uh, yes. NAACP. A great Juneteenth parade and celebration. Although it was hot, it was still beautiful. It was amazing to see it come to pass. And thank everyone that came out and supported it. It was really nice. Yeah. That was a really nice event. It was, yeah. Very good. Yeah, no, it was. I didn't get to go to the parade, but I. Got to sneak in at the park and yeah. Joanna Schultz nice. and Edna Wagner yep. were yeah, they, they were the key yeah. thing. Key, key people hard. there running around getting tents for some of us and oh, it's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Oh, they were awesome. Awesome. Very good. The difference one. Did you have I don't have anything else. else. Okay. Yeah. Commissioner Mark. Uh, just figuring out where I don't need to go, where I'm gonna have to spend six dollars a gallon on gas <laughs> next month. <laughs> so Anyway, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's got a moped. 
<laughs> okay, I didn't have anything. I'm just waiting just one more time. Can I give you one more uh, time? I had a great time at the, uh, when I finally got there to the Juneteenth Festival. Yeah. Chasing me and another guy chasing down a tent that was flying away. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. it, was, it, was, it was a nice looking festival. I, I thought it was going yeah, well. It was Pretty nice. Good. Oh, okay. Nice. Well, that's it. Um, have a great rest of the week and uh, take care, everybody.